Amako Fubua will make a statement on the late Honorable Lee Okra and in his memory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, it is with a heavy heart that I rise to pay tribute to the late Honorable Lee Tano Okran, whose sudden death occurred on Thursday, 21st of February, 2019. The Speaker, the late Honorable Lee Okran was a former member of parliament and a former minister of state. I have personally lost a mentor, a friend, and an icon for the development of the Western region and indeed Ghana. Mr. Speaker, the late Lee Okran's association with the governance of this country, this back to the Third Republic, when he was the Deputy Minister for the Western Region, and later as the Deputy Minister of Trade. On return from Ezra in the mid-80s, Mr. Speaker, he became the CEO of Pepsi-Cola and served as the longest CEO of Pepsi-Cola Ghana. Mr. Speaker, when Ghana returned to civilian rule, he joined the NDC and became a very active player of the party, rising at a later stage to be the party's vice chairman. He was the deputy science and environment minister during the Rollins civilian administration. Under the late President Mills, he was made Ghana's high commissioner to South Africa, and later as Ghana's education minister. Under President John Mahama, he was appointed as the board chairman of the Volta River Authority. In the speaker, I recall vividly how nervous I was in announcing his appointment at the time. And the reason was very simple, Mr. Speaker. How do I supervise this giant as a minister of energy when, quite frankly, he was the deputy minister of the Western Region when I was still in the elementary school. Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy to know that he was so dedicated and so professional that he made it so easy to work with him. And his achievements at VRA speaks volumes. His dedication and hard work was always on display on all the positions he held. As Vice Chairman of the NDC, Mr. Speaker, he is credited for his steadfast commitment to the ideals of social democracy and his role in ensuring that those ideals are reflected in the NDC's manifesto and governance. The late Honorable Leo Crown, a native of Nauli in the Jomoro district of the Western region, became associated with the Parliament of Ghana on the 7th of January 2005 having won the elections on the 7th December 2004 to represent the good people of Jomoro. Although a one-term member of parliament, he dutifully served the people of Jomoro and the nation till his tenure ended on the 6th of January 2008. In parliament, he served on the business committee, the committee on roads and transport, and the committee on health, where he served as the ranking member. As a member of parliament, Honorable Lee Okran was very active, both at the committee and at plenary, and always emphasized national unity as a necessary ingredient for building a strong democracy. Contributing to a statement on International Women's Day in this house, uh, he said, and Mr. Speaker, with your permission, I quote, in the former Eastern Europe during the Soviet era, 8 March was a public holiday in all socialist countries. It was a day when women were honored, women were appreciated, presents and flowers were given to women by their men folk. We in Ghana today do not give any prominence to this day. I wonder how many ordinary women even know of this day. I wish to call on our women leaders to try to propagate the day so that we men will be encouraged on this day to honor our women for the support that they give us at home, unquote. The speaker speaking on women uh, in another debate on uh, a statement on uh, female genital mutilation, uh, this is what he stated. As for female genital mutilation, I do not think 
there are many men who support the act because it is only cruel to women. It is not only cruel to women, but also deprives a certain group of people from the few pleasures they get, unquote. As an indigenous, he was very passionate whenever he had the opportunity to speak on the developmental challenges confronting the nation and the Western region in particular. He, he, like other colleagues from the Western region, had always impressed upon government to implement measures to address the infrastructure gaps in the Western region. That has been motivated by some of the development initiatives in the harbor and, and the railway sectors of the region as alluded by the then Minister for Harbors and Railways. And that, at that particular period, this is what the late Honorable Leo Kran had to say. Mr. Speaker, I have been motivated to rise and speak to the statement made by the Honorable Minister for Harbors and Railways. I am motivated because as a Western region person, railways is part of my life. In fact, life in Sekendi Takradi revolves around the harbor and railways. With the decline of railways, economic activities in Sekendi in particular have declined tremendously, and Sekendi is almost a ghost town. Therefore, I'm happy to hear that great efforts are being made to revamp the railways, unquote. He was a true state functionary who was not just concerned about socioeconomic and infrastructure development of Ghana, he also related to issues on global threats to the development of our country, including environmental pollution, desertification, climate change, and global warming. Contributing to the debate on climate change in the House, he observed as follows, and I quote, global warming is a topical issue of our times. Global warming goes far about 10 years or 15 years ago, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, IPCC, was formed to look at the issues of greenhouse emissions and global warming. If you look at the Arctic area, the snow is melting. And with the snow melting, those of us living along the coastline are really in danger because it can lead to flooding on coast. The Speaker, Honorable Leokran, the late Honorable Leokran, continued to deepen ties with Parliament when he later served as the minister responsible for education. His prompt attendance upon the House and his committees and the very friendly manner in which he related to both colleagues of MPs and staff of the parliamentary service will still be recalled uh, with nostalgia. The courtesies he extended to the parliamentary uh, delegation to South Africa when he was ambassador uh, uh, was also something that we can recall. He was indeed a very jovial and affable, affable character, which attributes enabled him to endear himself to all persons who came into close contact with him. He was a man who spoke bluntly what he believed was right or represented the truth. He was a reasonable combination of tradition and flexibility. Mr. Speaker, as we mourn his sudden departure to glory, I, on behalf of Parliament, extend a heartfelt condolence to the widow and Tisati, the children, Papechi and Akuba, and the Berry family. May the soul of the late Honorable Leokran and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in perfect peace in the bosom of the Lord. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable.